Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer. Welcome to Digital Combat Simulator. And we're somewhere in the Caucasus. This is the map that comes with the game. I'll get to that in a minute. So we are in a North American P-51D Mustang. This is the P-51D 25NA. And we are going to go through startup. We're gonna take off, we're gonna fly up the coast, just 10 or 15 miles. And we're gonna do a VFR landing. That is the plan. That's what we're gonna try to do. So start a procedure. Uh, it's not terrible. It's not as bad as some of the jets that are in this game, but I really prefer, of course, my beloved Mustang. So first thing, carburetor air control. All right, take care of that. We're going to flip the covers off of our automatic radiator controls and confirm that both are set to automatic. That is water and oil. All right, make sure those are good. Then we're gonna come over here and battery on. Generator disconnect, turn the lights down a little bit. All right. And we also need to, let me see what order we want to do this in. Fuel flow on, magnetos on, flip the cover off the starter, fuel booster pump on. We're going to crack the throttle like so. Prime for a few seconds. All right. Starter. Kick the mix down, and we are we are running. Beautiful. So, uh, what else do we need to do? Uh, flip the cover back there. Pop RPM up. We need to. Put in six degrees of right rudder to compensate for torque on takeoff. This is a 27 liter V12 Rolls-Royce engine, Rolls-Royce Packard. And it's got a ton of torque and it will flip the plane, not completely over, but it will rotate it on takeoff as you get into the throttle. When you lift the wing, oh, if you're a pilot, you know all the, all the things that happen. More. More lift equals more drag equals all kinds of things. Right. Brought the flaps up. Those, I believe, when the aircraft is parked, those are extended to take pressure off the hydraulics. Or they may just kind of migrate down there on their own as they have no pressure in the system. I think that's everything. I think we are ready to go. Temperatures are coming up right down here. So that's good. Yeah, good there, good there. Did I forget anything? I did. We want to move that up just a bit. And then uncage. Okay. I think that's us ready to go. So we're going to taxi. And there's no traffic at this airport today. There is an ATC mod. Don't need that. Get that off there. There is an ATC mod. There's a ton of mods for this game. I don't have too many of them yet. I have some texture mods. I have some, uh, I'm trying to think what else. I have some sound mods and I am running reshade. Sorry, if I seem a little distracted, it is, I am like maximum concentration right now. I really want to do this right for you and it is not, it's not the easiest thing, but that's what I was looking for. So I said this game, it's made by crazy people. It must be. It is so uh, unbelievably detailed that it's uh now there are some quick modes i think i said that in a truck video there are some quick mo modes and you can just hop right in and fly and have a good time but if you're looking for that like maximum realism experience uh, this would be it it is really really realistic i've spent a few days in it i mean i can i can reliably consistently get the plane off the ground it's an accomplishment i can get it somewhat reliably back on the ground and I did try doing some missions just to see. I've got cheats and assists turned off and I realized with cheats and assists turned off, I really have an understanding of why getting five kills makes you an ace. I felt like I was lucky to even see five other aircraft. But the idea that I could like get in position on them and do any damage is, that's, that's a ways down the road. 
I am lucky to even be uh, controlling the thing. And we are going to use some differential braking to make our turn here. And because I am on a flight stick, but I'm not on rudder pedals. So our differential braking is done with the keyboard, which is, of course, binary. So you have to kind of tap it. If you hold it, the thing will flip over. And that's no good. So you have to tap it, and, uh, and it does have kind of a sudden effect. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about. Keyboard steering. It's not smooth. It's not smooth. So we'll get lined up here on the center line, and I believe that's us just about ready to go. All right. A little bit more differential braking. Turn right around here. So, I think that's us ready. So, here, the artificial horizon I noticed on this. on this plane is really finicky. I don't know if that's meant to replicate something from real life. Close canopy so we don't go deaf. I don't know if that's meant to replicate something if it was that way in real life, but it is certainly, I mean, you can see it's already drifting. We haven't even moved yet. So I will uh, recage that, reset that. It's something to do with the vibration apparently, right? Slight back pressure on the stick. This is going to lock the tail wheel and keep us tracking straight. 30 inches manifold pressure. Get us rolling. Once we're rolling, we're going to go to 50. Tail wheel will come up at about 100 miles per hour. We are flying. Gear transit. Your transit light is on. Gear is up and locked. There we go. We'll reduce prop RPM. There we go. Bump my watch off my steering wheel. We're going to... Yep. Take our rudder trim back to neutral. And we're going to make our turn up the coast here. Oh my goodness. If you knew how much fun I'm having with this, it's so, so challenging, but it's really, really satisfying. But what I've learned so far is I do have a flight stick, but it's a what I would consider a, a simplified flight stick. And it does have some buttons on it, 16 or 18 maybe, not nearly enough for a sim like this. The the whole keyboard is just full of commands. It's uh, it's ridiculous. I, I'm also using, you can see the camera's sort of jerking around. I'm using the hat on my joystick to move the camera. And I'm comfortable saying that to be effective in this sim, in this game, you would need a, a proper POTUS flight stick, a, a two-piece flight stick, and track IR at a minimum. Triple monitors would be a lot better. It's, I don't know, I, I'm, I love it. I'm trying to figure out how to make the most of it without spending a couple thousand dollars. And I, I know it can be done, I just have to figure out how. But yeah, it is, it's amazing. The level of detail, uh, the quality of the graphics. A reshade certainly like bumps it up a little bit, but it's a great looking game. It plays super fast. We're on ultra settings right now. We're at 70 FPS. Now we're not over, uh, town. I'm told that when you spend a lot of time over cities that your FPS can drop and when you have a lot of aircraft moving around in frame it can drop but I haven't seen that so far. We are running mod textures, mod sound, I believe this is a mod cockpit maybe? I don't know. A lot of, a lot of mods running and uh, I found a, an app that integrates everything and essentially allows you to turn mods on and off without going into your mod folder and deleting them manually. Which is a great help because this game is constantly being updated and 
as with a lot of other sims and games a patch will very often break mods temporarily until they're patched up so you can just anytime the game updates or patches you can just go in disable your mods and have everything continue to to function without doing the uh, local files verify through steam and having everything reset so yeah totally pleased with it so far i i mean i guess this is a good time to learn with the rig that i have now but you heard me bump my wheel earlier my wheel is more or less well naturally <laughs> mounted in the center of my desk i don't have a race rig i have a a prosumer wheel bolted to my desk and that works for me but i would like to have this flight stick in the middle of my desk when i'm in flight sim and i don't want to move my wheel it's it's perfect where it is right now and i i just don't want to get in that habit of constantly moving things around so ideally i could end up with a flight stick on the right arm of my chair and a flight throttle on the left arm i think that could be where we're headed not necessarily anytime soon like i said i just need to learn to fly like i did well check it out i can do it for you right now i was uh I was working the whoa sensitive. I was, I was working the barrel roll earlier, and it's it, you definitely got to spot the horizon. All right, here, here we go. There is ooh, there is quite a bit of elevator action in a barrel roll in in this aircraft in this sim versus a, a typical flight sim where if you want to do a barrel roll you just lay the stick over and it more or less pivots around itself it's uh it's realistic and I've, I've lost control of the aircraft seemingly for no reason so many times and then as i go back and sort of you know try to analyze what i did it's things like that like not spotting the horizon and and just getting that little bit not stable right just a little bit not where you want to be and everything sort of goes to pieces so the p51 was historically kind of a hard airplane to fly and i'm finding that to be true in this sim but i really really love it this is i guess my favorite plane ever uh at least as, as far as military aircraft go uh, the lockheed constellation is also a big favorite of mine but that's certainly a different kind of aircraft and we are there is an airport sort of well, I guess we can just peek this way yeah there's an air, airport right there so there should be another one at about one o'clock that's the one we're aiming for I'm gonna do it's gonna be really sloppy I'll give you a, like a heads up it's gonna be really sloppy but we're gonna do a VFR pattern and it's uh <laughs> it's gonna take a lot of practice it really is I'm feeling pretty happy for three days four days but it's there's so much to learn and and then like i said i haven't even the idea of shooting at somebody or somebody shooting at me are you kidding me i can barely get the thing up and down but rome was not built in a day so yeah i thought this would be a fun video to do for the last video of the year you're going to be seeing this on new year's eve i hope you had a fantastic year and i hope your 2020 is even better and if you didn't have a good 2019 i can relate not this year. 2019 was really good for me, but I, I've had some bad years. I know what that's like. And uh, 2020 is going to be better for you. I know it is. I know it is. So, like I said, if you had a good year, good on you. If you had a bad year, keep the faith. Hang in there. We are, so we're going to be aiming for, we're at about 2,500 feet right now. We're going to be aiming for 1,000 feet and about 200 miles per hour on our upwind leg. If you know VFR, if you know uh, if you know patterns, like I said, don't judge me too harshly. My my main concern is that after 20 minutes of this, I'm going to wreck the thing on landing. All right. So we are 1500 a little hot a little hot i must say but we're going to bleed off some of that airspeed when we level out all right all right there's a thousand feet 
more or less. Yeah, there's a thousand feet. So this is upwind, and there's yeah, there's our airspeed coming down. Fantastic. My turns are not coordinated at the moment. I'm uh, I'm using the twist rudder function in my flight stick, and again, you know, without pedals, it's it's a handful. But I don't want to get in the habit of using cheats and assists already. I mean, the whole the whole point of me flying this aircraft is that it's a difficult aircraft to fly, and I want the full experience, like I always do. Getting a little too high there. Spot that. Yeah, it is. I've seen some formation flying. Of course, I've been watching YouTubers play this game, play the sim, and the formation flying and the things that they do is absolutely astonishing. I love it. So we are. All right, we're back at back at a thousand feet. A little bit slow. We're at like 150. That's not ideal. So bump of throttle right there. There we go. That's better. And I don't have a spot yet. I haven't flown these airports enough to have some good uh, VFR landmarks picked out. If you fly VFR, you know, you know when the north, when the dock on the north side of the pond passes your uh, passes your your left side canopy lock. I don't know whatever. That's when you start your your turn for final or whatever. Everybody's got different ones, but I haven't flown these airports enough to know any good landmarks, but I'll find them. So where is back there? Oh, hey, hey, hey. I, I mean, I guess we could just go out to the, out to the water. Nah, that's a little too far. No need for that. Do this here. We're a little high. So, all right. Here we go. Yeah, really gaining a lot of altitude. That's not what I want to do. Now we're losing a lot of altitude. That's also not what I want to do. All right. So we're too high, we're too slow. Story of my life. a little bit get rid of some of this airspeed we're a little fast for gear but I gotta do it gear down gear transit gear is locked flaps this is gonna be a little bit ugly but I think we can I think we can salvage this, and I really hope so. It's a long runway. All right, there we are. And we want to touch down about 90 miles per hour. That's okay. There we are. Full flaps. Get every bit of control surface out that we can. Because you don't want to hit the brakes. I'm saying this like I know. I just, I've just i learned this stuff for the past few days. But you want to do as much braking as possible with control surfaces and flaps. And then only use the wheel brakes at the last possible minute when you're going really pretty slow. And I see a taxiway here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Wasn't quite what I planned on doing. Let's see if we can get this thing off the runway. Be a little bit more, a little bit more professional. There we are, like so. You don't know how happy I am. 
that I didn't wreck this airplane in a video. Hang on, one more, one more. There we go. We are off the runway. Beautiful. Canopy open. Canopy's open. Beautiful. Make our turn here. And I don't know where parking is at this airport, so I'm just gonna pull it right up here. We'll call it. Right, like so. Carefully, carefully apply the brakes. I don't know if you saw at the end of the runway the way the tail came up. This plane, it's a great big engine and it's forward of the wheels and it just wants to flip constantly. All right, so there's brakes. And then if we come down here, right here is parking brake. Pull that out like so. Parking brake is set. We can come outside, have a look. There you have it. Folks, thanks for stopping back to check out The Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for our first episode of Digital Combat Simulator. This is the North American P-51D Mustang. And we'll see you next time. Take care now.